Welcome again to the Nomad Chitello YouTube channel. You may have seen some of our other videos where we offer advice for traveling to Venice, Italy. And today we're here with some pretty big news for any traveler planning to visit Venice. Now we've been expecting this for a while. Venice has started requiring an entrance fee for visitors. So let's talk about the details. I'm Nick, and of course, Luna is joining me from Italy. Hey, Luna. Hi there. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Finally here to talk about now, would you call it an entrance fee or an entrance ticket? What's the right so, way to refer to it? I think the official name, now that we have it, it's access fee, straight access from the fee. town of Venice. So, and it's, it's easy to talk about it like a ticket, but there's no ticket you hold in your hand. So maybe you can give us Ish. the general idea of how this works. Is it a ticket you hold in your hand? Uh, it can be. Uh, okay, so um, the the general idea is that uh, the city of Venice is trying to uh, curb, control the number of people who come to Venice uh, in some particular days, especially, and uh, uh, for the day. So daily visitors that don't stay in the city itself. So they're trying to come up with a way of... Uh, uh, limiting the number of people that only touch and go. So they, they come just for the day to visit the city. And uh, um, it's, uh, it's basically a voucher with a QR code that you can have on your mobile, you can have in your email, or you can print it and have it physically. So yes, it could be. Sounds like when you get a theater ticket, you know, you could print it, you could just have yeah. it on your phone, whatever you prefer. Exactly. Yes. Well, let, let's kind of lean into that why, because I think a lot of people are going to be watching this thinking that's that's crazy. Why would they do that? If you've never visited Venice or if you haven't visited Venice in the very popular summer months, you know, if you go to Venice in July, it gets unbelievably crowded to the point where you can't walk down the street. It's difficult to get where you go, where you want to go. And you know, it's very inconvenient, and difficult for each individual person visiting, but I assume it has a real impact on the residents who live there and people trying to do business there. Having that many people just opening the floodgates and coming into Venice is a real problem. So this is meant to address that. Yes, exactly. And, uh, and we actually shot a video, uh, I think a year and a half ago, talking about the different measures that the the city was thinking about to uh, to solve this problem to face this problem uh, and uh, other measures uh, uh, include uh, giving huge discounts if you book your transportation tickets uh, well in advance like a month or more in advance because the the whole goal of this is to have people mindfully preparing for their trip and not just uh, on a whim, taking and going to Venice for the day, just because they they can. So, so I have questions that I could maybe guide you through, but maybe you've already thought of what you want to say to kind of set the framing for what this is all about. Okay. Uh, well, so um, basically, twenty twenty four is going to be an experiment, uh, experimental year. Uh, because the actual uh, program is going to start in 2025. So for the moment, uh, if you're planning on visiting Venice from the end of April onwards, then you should stick around and hear what, what we have to say, because this uh, regards you as well. So uh, I'm looking to the side because I'm surrounded by the newspapers that are full of all kinds of information about this. Uh, this fee. And uh, uh, for this year, as I was saying, uh, the dates that are uh, included in the experiment are uh, every day from the 25th of April to the uh, 5th of May. And then after that, every weekend, so every Saturday and Sunday, until the 14th of July, uh, excluding the 1st and 2nd of June. So if you're planning on visiting Venice on any of these dates, then 
you have to uh, take care of the access fee. Now let's One clarify, because you're referring to it as an experiment, but this is a regulation that will be in place. People will have to follow yes. this this law at the on those dates. Absolutely. It okay. will just get more complex next year with more dates added uh, and uh, different uh, uh, fees, uh, different fares, depending on the day. While this year is five euro a day in all of these dates. Uh, so for a limited uh, period of time. So maybe an easy thing to just kind of set aside right now is if you're visiting on a day that is not one of those affected dates, you just don't even have to think about this. Exactly. You're, okay. you're free. But if you are visiting on one of those dates, and maybe we should classify this in two ways, um, and tell me if this is a good way to think about it. People who are just visiting for one day compared to people who are booking a hotel or booking an apartment and staying for several days. Should we talk about those separately? Yes, and I would start with people who are staying in a hotel or uh, any other structure. Including because Airbnb. if you are, yes, Airbnbs, okay. uh, apartments, uh, rooms, anything. Uh, if you are booking uh, an, a structure uh, of this kind in Venice, in Mestre, or any part of the metropolitan city of Venice, you are exempt from the access fee. But that doesn't mean that you don't need a voucher. You still need a voucher that says, I'm staying in a, in a structure. Now, it's, uh, it's a news from, I think, yesterday that the hotels should be able to provide this voucher automatically upon booking. So when you receive your booking confirmation, you should also receive a separate email with the vouchers for, uh, for all the people that have booked. Uh, if they are unable to provide it, or if uh, mm, they don't give you any information about it, do ask them uh, for clarification because they could even uh, uh, have them printed and ready for you at the reception when you check in, for example, or any structure could uh, work differently. Uh, it's possible that uh, uh, some structures uh, will tell you to take care of the, uh, of the voucher yourself. So you will have to, uh, to do the whole procedure yourself uh, on the website. And I would guess that most Airbnb stays, you would be responsible for getting it yourself. You wouldn't depend on the person renting the Airbnb. Not necessarily, because uh, as far as the newspapers uh, go, uh, they say that uh, most Airbnbs are, uh, uh, are able to, uh, to get a voucher for you uh, through, the, uh, through the city special. Uh, website uh, that they they have set up for uh, the structures, so they might be able to to send you an email with the vouchers anyway. But keep in mind that all of these structures must be registered with the uh, with the city. Okay. So there is uh, there must be some way of uh, of having the voucher pretty easily if if not from them, from the, the website uh, by yourself. Uh, if you can't find the structure on the, on the website, uh, uh, it could be a problem. They might be an illegal structure. So, uh -huh. you so is it worth talking about what, that. is it worth talking about what we should do if the hotel or the Airbnb does not offer the ticket to you directly? Uh, well, I would recommend, first of all, to uh, to mention it uh, in your email exchanges, in your messages, like ask for uh, for the voucher or how it works. Uh, if they uh, tell you to to go to the website, uh, then do that absolutely, and we will see what uh, what the pr procedure looks like. And uh, if you can't find them on the on the website. Uh, uh, do tell them because it could be a technical issue. I wasn't able to find a, a hotel the other day just because there was a spelling mistake, for example. Mm -hmm. So, so that could be uh, a problem. And they should also tell you how to find them 
in the in the website because hotels have names but apartments not necessarily right. so uh, they need you to give you the tools to do it yourself if you have to okay so should we see the website or should we talk about the other scenario before we see the website sure let's uh let's look at the at the website okay so you will find the link in the description and this is the home page that will open up with the, all the the dates that uh, are required uh, for this uh, program by the way um the uh, the rule uh, only mm, applies from 8 30 in the morning to 4 p.m so if you're visiting in those hours then you are uh, required to worry about uh, the access fee uh, and uh, if not uh, if you're coming only in the evening for example then you're uh, you're not you don't have to worry about it um, so uh, in your case if you're staying in a structure you would go and click on the exemptions uh, uh, page which opens up this page so as you can see there are a lot of uh, of options in your case probably it's this one that you're interested in i'm a guest of an accommodation facility located in the municipality of venice because again it's uh, uh, it applies to the whole municipality so uh, request exemption so you would select the the first date you check in to the end date that you check in that can be also outside of the uh, the red days as they call them then you fill in with your information and uh, uh, also how many people in total are staying there and here is where you look for the facility so as you can see you can if, find all if they've done what they're supposed the, to do they're registered and they're on this list exactly exactly and in, as you can see there are also codes for every facility so the structure could give you just the code and you could, could you search by to... that code instead Absolutely. of the name let's see if okay great so it gives you both uh, whatever the address that corresponds to that number or okay. the code number as well. Okay. So, so you, you, you go. go through this process and you end up with a QR code that you can keep with you. Exactly. Your... Exactly. Okay. For, uh, for the family, I, I believe. So you can uh, request one for all the people that are staying together at the same structure. And because it's in an email, each person can have it on their phone. So if they separate for a few hours, they'll, they'll still all have it. Exactly. And, and that's another point that I was going to bring up. We don't know what kind of uh, controls of checks there will be. This was this one of my system. questions. How is it enforced? They haven't decided yet, apparently. Uh, it will be most likely um, police officers or um, law enforcement uh, officials are uh, very recognizable with the bright colored vests uh, around the city but clearly because there are so many people it will only be uh, like random checks uh, they will not be able to check everybody I think that'll be very interesting on one hand you think of a train or even the Vaporetto where sometimes an officer will come out and just check everybody's ticket and make sure they paid for it. No big deal. But if it's, you know, officers roaming the city who can randomly check somebody, it, it brings to my mind the movies, like the World War II movies you've seen where the, the Nazi soldiers are, show us your papers, which I'm sure there was a version of that in reality, which does not, it's not a great look. I mean, they are they are talking about only having the agents uh, uh, patrolling piazzale roma and the station for the moment which are okay. the main entrances to the city 
but they talked about having turnstiles installed and wow. the, mm, most of the people have protested this very sure. very angrily uh but yeah we don't know yet what and, the and giving police is. some reason to randomly stop people you know could it could definitely lend itself to you know profiling and prejudicial actions and Sure. It'll be very yeah. interesting to watch and, and see how this, mm -hmm. how this pans out. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So we've seen what you do if you're staying for multiple days in a hotel or a rental apartment. <laughs> but what if you're just going to visit Venice for the day? You drive in, you, you know, or you take the train in and you're just going to spend a few hours during the day and you're not spending the night. What do you do? And let me add one other case if you're coming with a cruise ship aha uh -huh, yes because it's uh, it's been i think uh, confirmed that, that if you're coming with a cruise ship and let's say arriving in trieste or chioggia or another destination and being transported to venice for the day you are subject to paying the the access fee so and we're assuming the cruise ship does not handle it you're responsible for taking care of this yourself Exactly. Okay. Uh, Although, is the no, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a tour manager on the cruise ship who helps people with that. But from what we're exactly. communicating, I would not expect that. Exactly. Exactly. So better safe than sorry. <laughs> better see how it works if you're if you have to to pay for it. So in this case, you would select payment of the fee, which opens this uh, this uh, page with the calendar and of course you can select only one day at the time because the idea is that you're only visiting for one day so you would continue select visitors and uh, um, minors and up to 14 years old don't pay but still need to be registered and the good news is you can pay for everybody uh, at the same time. So you would put uh, the name, the uh, name and last name, and then continue to the payment page uh, after this. Uh, and that's it. You can pay by credit card, uh, um, PayPal, I believe. Uh, so um, it's a pretty straightforward uh, procedure and after that you can download the QR code or have it sent it to your email or, or both. So you don't have to do this if you live in Venice, clearly, if you're a resident. Exactly. And that includes Mestre, mm -hmm. anything that is the metropolitan, you know, municipality. It, uh, of I believe it, re uh, it includes all of Veneto. I'm just all of the region checking. of Veneto, which we could compare to one of the U.S. states. Yes, a very small not, not necessarily <laughs> in size, but that organization. Yes, yeah. exactly. So yeah. a, a, a police officer stops you and you show them your My local ID. ID with your address yes. on it. Okay, exactly. So here's a scenario. I come to Venice. I have not booked an apartment. I have not booked a hotel. I'm going to stay at your apartment. Your mm -hmm. personal residence is not uh, in the catalog on the website. So mm -hmm. would I buy individual day passes because I can't yes. buy a multi-day? Okay. So I'd have to buy exactly. individual day passes. Mm -hmm. Okay. As a, and as a non if I were if I were a resident of... Uh, the historical center of Venice, then you would be exempt because you would be visiting somebody who lives in the city. But, but unfortunately, I live in Mestre. So. How would I, how would I register that exemption if your private residence is not in the catalog? The There's website? a different uh, category. Uh huh. I believe so. In the exemption, uh, I see. I'm a relative. I need yeah, to invite the just... sentences. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 
So this would be the category that I would select. So I would have to do that. Okay. But so it again. appears like they have the different scenarios and contingencies considered, but also this is, you know, a, a pilot program. And, and of course, some, some mm -hmm. problems will arise and, and we'll just have to see how they face each one. Absolutely. And, and by the way, something that I forgot to mention, this applies to Venice and Judecca, but not to the other islands. So okay. if by any chance you're going straight to Murano, Burano, Torcello without passing through Venice or Lido, Pellestrina, then you don't have to, to worry about the access fee. That doesn't apply there. Okay. Also, if you're going, I was reading something, if you're going straight from Piazzale Roma to the station to take a train, because, I don't know, because you arrived there, from uh, uh, or from Tronchetto, for example, uh, which is the coach um, deposit uh, uh, hub, uh, you can uh, not have the the QR code, the voucher, but you have to to prove uh, that you have a train ticket uh, and that you're going to to take a train, for example, because only the 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 journey from Piazzale Roma to the train station is allowed. Uh, so you arrive station. by bus and you're just walking over to the train. Exactly. You just need to prove they have a train ticket, which I think is is pretty rare. I mean, Venice is the end of the line for both the bus route and the train route. It would be a weird connection to make, but I can Agreed. see they, they've got yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And can you book one of these? Can you get your day pass same day? You know, you woke up in the morning and, and thought, hey, let's let's go to Venice. You can reserve it the same day. Yes. Yes, you can do that. Mm -hmm. OK. So I think that covers the details and the different scenarios. Is there anything that that I haven't thought of? Uh, I'm having a look and. Uh, um... Now, there's another thing that um, that came to mind, uh, which is sports events. Okay. Uh, and theoretically, it's not very clear, but theoretically, if you're in town just to participate to a sport event, you are exempt. You still have to uh, go and, uh, um, and download a voucher. Uh, but I'm not very clear on if all sports events or mm -hmm. only selected sport events uh, are included in the exemptions. Um, so yeah, I, I was not... thinking, for example, of Vogalonga, for example. So if you're just coming for the Vogalonga, which is obviously on a weekend, uh, then are you exempt? I think so. Not sure, 100%. <laughs> Personally, I would say if I found myself in that situation, five euro is enough to just not have to worry about it. So True. I would go ahead and True. get the ticket. And, you know, it's not like the main city of Venice has huge sports stadiums. There, there is a medium sized stadium for basketball, if I remember correctly, but not. Yeah, and soccer. There's a soccer stadium. Okay. F football, soccer. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't know about that. But are, are there stadiums? you know, in Mestre, outside of the main city, where this would be yes. an important yeah. consideration? Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. And, uh, and of course, that's, uh, that's not uh, applicable, because, again, the voucher is only about the, the main city of Venice. So, uh, so I think this exemption uh, applies mostly to um, supporters of the soccer team that go and, and see the, the Sunday game at the, at the stadium. Okay. So I think those are all of the details that, that we need to know. So if you are going to, oh, there was one more question. What happens if you are caught without an exemption or a day pass on one of the affected dates? Well, they will be issuing fines between 50 and 300 euros, plus 10 euros for every person who does not have the voucher. So there are fines for people who do not follow these new laws. 
Okay, so if you are planning to ve visit Venice this summer, this is definitely something you should have an eye on. Uh, all the, the links and information are included in the, in the comments. Anything else before we wrap up? And if you do have any questions or doubts on the whole procedure, leave a comment and we will be more than happy to help you out uh, as much as we can. We're learning as we go. And of course, we encourage you to check out our other videos, how to arrive in Venice, guides for walking around Venice and public transportation. We're, we're really trying to communicate as much as we can to help people figure out their way when they're visiting Venice. Thank you. Thank you.